everyone, James again from the Mastering Revit authoring team, and this is a quick video about creating custom rail joins. Um, not really the rail joins themselves, but rail extensions, which is relatively new to the Revit 2013 user interface. So what you see here is a very simple example stair that I've created just for the sake of illustrating this uh, this exercise. And if you saw our my introductory video on stairs, um, you'll remember that there are now separate components within stairs and railings. So you can select the overall stair object itself. I can hover my mouse over the railing, hit tab once, and I can get access to subcomponents of these elements such as the top rail. So this is where we're going to find this first uh, piece called an extension. So I'm going to tab in select that top rail and you'll notice up in the type selector it says top rail circular one and a half inch I really can't change the top rail type because it's pinned to the system so if I unpin the top rail type I can then change it from the type selector uh, the reason it's pinned is that it's being specified as part of the overall rail system that said, I can make changes to the top rail type settings. So with that top rail selected, I'm going to click over here on Edit Type inside my Properties palette to open up the Type Properties dialog box. And in the Type Properties for the top rail type, you'll see that I have two new things that you probably haven't seen before. Extensions. You have extensions at the beginning or the bottom, and you have extensions at the end or the top. Now, an extension style is a pretty basic way of, of, of ending the top rail. And Revit gives you three basic settings, wall, floor, and post. I'm going to show you what each one of these looks like. If I set the beginning or the bottom extension to post, and I set the length to be one foot. This is typical code that it's one foot plus the tread depth. So it's going to take whatever my last tread depth is, add that to the one foot length extension and I'll click OK and we'll see what happens so now everywhere that that top rail extension has occurred I now have a, an extension that goes the tread depth plus one foot and it returns back to the post let's look at a different style once again I have my top rail selected I'm going to return to the edit type button to open my type properties dialog and I'm going to change the extension type from post to floor and this time we'll just click apply and we'll see what happens in the background you can see that the top rail now extends down to the floor slab if I change it to wall and click apply you'll see that it just kind of terminates if you wanted to do that kind of a wall extension and you could do a, a, a beginning or a bottom termination type, you could do that right below here in the type properties. And you can have it wrap into the wall. But let's say you wanted to customize this. Let's say we wanted we, we, we are setting this up for a post setting, which you could see the change is reflected everywhere that, that this um, top rail type is used so that's good but let's say you wanted this one to be slightly different I can tab into that rail once again and up at the top I could say edit rail up in the contextual tab in the ribbon and when that is selected now you notice that I have some different things I could do here I can change the profile but that would be a little bit awkward if you change the profile in an edit mode. You really want to do that in the type properties of the top rail. But let's say we want to edit the path. That's really probably what you'd most likely be doing here. And when I'm in edit path mode, I can select any piece of the path and adjust it. It doesn't have to be the default settings. I can even draw different pieces of the rail path. Unjoin. And I'm just going to do a little extra line down here to connect this. It's 
So you, you can see that the, the controls are, are there. You're essentially sketching uh, a sweep along a path and you can completely customize that extension. Now the one problem with this is that if you needed this customized extension on all of this rail type, you'd have to go and do that same editing action on every one of the stair, uh, the, 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 the top rail type. So that's a little bit problematic. So if you'd want, you could stick with the exercise that's in Mastering Revit Architecture to build a customized family that you would load in as your ending baluster. That's probably the safest bet if you have many repeated custom extensions on your rails. Um, otherwise, you can just be aware that these things, the, the default extensions, are in Revit. They're buried inside of the top rail type properties. And you can use them to get to a pretty basic design. Hope this video was helpful and stay tuned for more videos from our Mastering Revit team.